Uh, praise the Lord, brethren, and thank you for staying tuned. And uh, we continue with the Word of God, and uh, we'll have a wonderful time in worship. And hopefully you were there with that. And we thank the Lord for His grace, His mercy, and loving kindness. Amen. So we're just going to thank the Lord with a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for another opportunity to discuss your word, for us to learn all the things that you've given unto us, those things that have been freely given unto us, the mysteries of the kingdom. But we have the mighty Holy Spirit, our God, our Father, our Mother himself, to teach us to take what is the Lord Jesus and give unto us. And this is exactly what he is doing even in these last days, that we need to understand the unfolding of the end times, all the events that we need to know before each one of your comings. We give you thanks, we give you praise. Lead us with Holy Spirit, giving us we are depending on your leadership. When you move, we move with you. When you stop, we stop and wait for you for the next instruction. We give you praise, we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, for the past three weeks, we've been dealing with um, the comings of the Lord. I mean, this is a series that we've started. A teaching and a discussion as well. Uh, we're still trusting the Lord for us to get interactive and uh, you know all things work together for good and uh, in it makes all things beautiful in his own time so we're planning but we need to trust uh, when we should start doing something because um, we we ought to be led by, by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So, so we've talked about uh, we covered the subject of the coming of the Lord and we've mentioned that the Lord comes back into the into the, the earth's atmosphere at least five times, okay? and we have evidence to show that um, about His return, about His coming. Okay? He has already been on earth once. That is the first coming when He came in the flesh. He was born, grew up as a normal human being. He was born in Bethlehem. And he grew up in Nazareth and he moved to Galilee when he started his ministry. Okay? And then he traveled all around Israel, different every town preaching the gospel of the kingdom, okay? healing the sick, raising the dead, and so on. And ultimately he suffered, he was accused innocently, he suffered, was beaten, was ridiculed, was dehumanized, undignified, and died on the cross. And he was buried after three days he on the third day he resurrected and was seen by at least 500 individuals so there was enough evidence because there was testimony of those that saw him and could testify to the resurrection the tomb has been empty since then you can dig and dig until whenever you won't find a single bone because he actually resurrected and he ascended to heaven so we said that the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ marked the beginning of the last days. And while he was on earth with his disciples, he prophesied about this, he taught about this, he taught about his coming. But we've been able to look at the scriptures and to establish exactly what those comings are. So it does not only come back once, because you'll see that when you read in the scriptures about the coming of the Lord, you have different passages or different um, uh, connotations in there and different uh, uh, account referring to his coming but the Lord does not tell us in clear terms there that I'm coming back so many times he left that for us to discover and this is what the Lord does he doesn't give us everything otherwise there's no fun in it otherwise we, we become dysfunctional he wants us to do things so tell us occupy till I come work yeah, do this do that go here because we ought to function. Okay? So this is what we are doing. The Holy Spirit is with us now, is teaching us about all things that concern this kingdom. It's taking what is Christ, meaning what Christ has fulfilled and accomplished in following the will of the Father and explaining those things to us so that we know what we've been given, so that we understand what in what we have believed and in whom we have believed. And the essence of our existence in this kingdom is for us to know who we are in Christ, what He's given us to do, what to expect. Okay. It's not for us to be blind, because we are not blind, we have sight, we have insight, we have foresight. Okay. It's for us to be knowledgeable. Okay. 
So what we are reading about in the account of the scriptures in relation to the coming of the Lord, it is a reality that supersedes all reality. It is a matter of life, really. So last week we looked at, we started uh, the forthcoming, and we mentioned that the forthcoming is connected to Armageddon. Yeah? So we're coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So the difference between the forthcoming and the third coming, which I've covered already, and the second coming, which I've covered, and the first coming, which we all know about already, is that in the forthcoming, the Lord Jesus Christ actually enters the earth, the earth at the earth atmosphere directly from heaven and touches the ground. In the second coming, it comes back for the saints, but it does not touch the ground. It enters the, the earth's atmosphere, but it stays up in the cloud, in the air. The dead in Christ, after hearing the, the, trump, the sound of the trumpet by the archangel, which is a call, an alarm, they get up, they rise up. And those that will be alive, together with those that are resurrected, all will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. It will be so fast a transformation, it will be difficult for you to monitor it. And after transforming, then we are all caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and off we go to heaven. That's what happens the second coming. The third coming, the Lord comes back again, similarly, does not land on earth, does not touch the ground, it stays up in the air. But this time, he shows the manifestation of his grandeur, of his power, his dominion, of his preeminence as God. The Bible tells us that the sun will be darkened, the moon will turn to blood, meaning changing color, looking red in color, like crimson, crimson red. And the stars of heaven will fall to the earth, and the sky will open up, will roll up one end and another end to show if, you know, the, the, the vision or the, the view into the heaven. And the whole earth will see this. And people will be afraid, terrified. They'll be asking for rocks and, and, and you know, building what, 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 what have you to follow them for them to die. But they won't die because the Lord wants them to see that. And in the process, the Lord will call home his people. Two groups of people, the Lord is coming back for the, on the third coming. The saints, those who have believed while here on earth, because they would have seen the, the challenges and the difficulties and, and, and the, the spiritual reality that we have been talk to, talking about while we're all here on earth. Now you'll come, they'll come face to face with these realities. And some of them will choose to go on the Lord's side. And while the beast is reigning, Dragon and his two friends, the, the earth beast, the, the, the sea beast and the earth beast are terrorizing the world, okay? killing people. Those will die because of their testimony for Christ Jesus. Those will be killed by the beast. Also will resurrect when the Lord comes back for them on the third coming. Or gather them, the saints, and the remnant of Israel, the 144,000, 12,000 for each tribe. And we didn't mention about the fact that the tribe of Dan is not mentioned in there. It's in the missing tribe replaced by Manasseh. We explained but our reason uh, be behind that. And this is what the Lord does for the third coming. It still does not touch the ground. Mm. But on the fourth coming... All the saints are coming back with the Lord because the Lord is coming now to fight his enemy and to kill as many as must be killed. Mm. He's riding on a white horse, wearing a white robe, which signifies righteousness, and the army, 
meaning all the saints are also riding behind them on white horses, wearing their white robe as well, which signify righteousness. And the Lord has many crowns on his head, and he has the name of King of Kings and Lord of Lords on his thigh and on his robe. And he has a name on his forehead, but no one knows, but himself knows what that name means. Yeah. And there's a sword, which is the word of God, a sword, a double-headed sword, out of his mouth, standing out of his mouth. Yeah. So he has declared war on his enemies. And those enemies will be the ones that have been, uh, uh, will, 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 will get a, t a chance to touch on them as well, to know who are those enemies. Yeah. And... That battle is what we know as Armageddon. So the forthcoming is about Armageddon. Yeah. So the Lord is coming to fight his enemies after the reign of the dragon, the sea beast, and the earth beast. That's the essence of the forthcoming. Okay. But what we need to know then is to look at the events that, that precede the coming of the Lord because this is what we've, we've realized as the Holy Spirit has uh, led us to, to understand that the best way to, to relate to, the, to, to the, the many comings of the Lord Jesus is to look at the events that come before. Okay? And then we'll be able to tie everything nicely when we start looking at the de details of uh, some of the side stories. Okay? Obviously then it will make sense once we, we have understood what the comings are all about, what the events are which precede each coming, and therefore we'll be able to tie, to, to make connection to other aspects which may seem um, not connected when you look at them at the, on, on face value. Yeah? But it will all be made clear eventually. Okay? So we'll continue from where we left off uh, last week. We were looking at the events that precede the forthcoming And um, we, we started with the everlasting gospel, yeah, which we touched on already, that the Lord will send an angel to spread the last gospel, to preach the last gospel. And there will be three angels, one preaching the gospel, the second one warning about the system of the world, which is represented in the kingdom of Babylon. And then the other angel warning about warning the, 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 the inhabitants of the earth uh, from following the worship, from worshipping the beast as, it's, well, as if it were an alternative. So it's not, it's not the right alternative because there's no alternative to, uh, to not worshipping, to not following the Lord God yeah, because the world system would have collapsed. And the reign of the, of the dragon and, 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 the, and the beast was also coming to an end. So there was no recourse. The only solution, the only uh, of option that mankind has is to turn to God Almighty. So the Lord will send his angel to bring these warnings, these messages to the inhabitants of the earth because there won't be any believer left here on earth. The Lord will come for some in the second coming, as many as possible, and will come for the rest on the third coming. Come back for the rest on the third coming. So after the third coming, there won't be any Christian, any born again Christian left on earth. None at all. And that's why the Lord is sending an angel to come and preach the gospel. Because there's no human being, born again Christian, to do that. Because he's taking them all to heaven. Okay. So that's where we left off. So we're going to continue and look at some more events uh, that will precede the, the fourth coming, which is about uh, Armageddon. So, so we, we, so, so we touched on the, the everlasting gospel, and then we also touched on the, the harvesting of the saints, how the Lord's going to, uh, uh, you know, um, take the saints away out of the earth. So, he does not say that he himself comes, he says that he sends out his angels to gather them from every corner of the earth and, and under heaven. Yeah. So, there is no mention that the Lord himself comes, so that's why we did not. Uh, call that a coming per, per se because the Lord does not say that he himself comes or enters the earth's atmosphere but he rather sends his angels to, 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 to do the harvesting of the saints 
uh, before the, the, the forthcoming. Amen. And we read it. We read the scriptures uh, for for that. That is in the in, in the video app already on on Facebook on on our, on our page. You can you have access to that. So after the everlasting gospel has been uh, preached, as one event, and the harvesting of the saints has also happened. That's another event. Then there was a third event, which is the termination of the dragon and his beastie friends. Rain. So the reign of the dragon, that is Satan himself, and uh, the sea beast is second in command, and the earth beast with the, the false prophets as well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Their reign also ends before the forthcoming. Yeah. So, under that uh, uh, event, we are separating three clear um, sub event or three clear you know um, occurrences yeah? a is the wrath of God yeah? B a gathering of the enemies and C call to the birds for a flesh feast we'll get the details of what that means what the scripture is uh, telling us okay? so for the wrath of God we have the the seven seal which is a very detailed and, and intricate you know, mystery and, and we'll see what the scripture says uh, about that okay so we'll look at the book of revelation chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14 okay i'll read and i saw this is john speaking and i saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals then i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals and no one in heaven nor on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and to look at it so i wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it but one of the elders said to me do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne now when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and you have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth 11 then i looked and i heard the voice of many angels around the throne the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever 14 then the four living creatures said amen and the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever yeah. in that passage we're learning about the seven seals and there's quite a lot packed in there 
because the seven seals are about the judgment, are about the recompense that the Lord has prepared for the enemy, for his enemies, and those that have uh, molested, mistreated, killed, murdered the prophets and his saints. It is their due judgment, their due recompense. Now, this is how the Lord works. Everything that the Lord has done, has created, he has established with his word. He has to speak his word forth for things to happen. Until he speaks, until his word lifts his mouth, his lips, into the atmosphere, nothing happens. So the scroll had to be opened and sealed, meaning it had to be read out. Because the writing was on it, inside and outside, but nobody could read it, because they had to hold it first. But for you to be able to hold the scroll, you need to have the correct status. No one can present any argument to the Father on behalf of mankind as a mediator better than Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, 1 Timothy, um, if I'm not mistaken, that there's only one mediator between God and man, that's the man Christ. No one else. Because he was slain. Because he pleased the Father. So he's doing this on our behalf. So John weeped before because uh, there's no solution. There's no one who can do this. Because without the seals, without the judgment, there can't be an end. For there to be consummation, judgment needs to happen as well. And all that judgment was held within and bound within the scroll. So no one was found worthy to take the scroll and to read it out. Mm. But the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, so he took the scroll and the scroll was then, then he, he was able to undo the seals and each time he, undid, and he, he had undone the seal, the scroll was read out in details for the content to be made manifest where here on earth and to reveal any mysteries that we needed to know concerning us those of us who are of the kingdom mm -hmm. there is other truth in there that we need to, to also realize we've touched on this before that when the Lord Jesus had taken the scroll okay, and John gives an account of the many angels including the 24 elders and there, that there was a celebration in heaven and then it says that in chapter 9 from chapter 8 yeah, that when he had taken the scroll the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, So, the twenty-four elders are spiritual beings that sit on their thrones around the main throne of God. They are servants of the Lord, they are in the kingdom. They have an important function. The four living creatures who surround the throne of God are even closer to the Lord God. Also our personal, spiritual personalities are servants of the Lord God and they are in the kingdom with a very, with a very important function. Yeah. So at this stage, they take the harp to sing a new song. Yeah. But we need to realize what is happening here. They had a harp and they were given bowls full of incense 
And those incense are the prayers of the saints. Who are the saints? You and I. So every prayer that we pray is not about, Lord, give me this, Lord, give me that, job promotion, child. No. Those prayers that are kept in those bowl incense, are, are kept in those bowls of incense, are prayers that are be, we are praying in accordance with the will of God. Especially the prayer that we pray in tongues, because our understanding is unfruitful, but we are speaking mysteries unto God. Those mysteries are to accomplish His plans and purposes. So those prayers are kept because they are ascending to the, the will of God. So we need, this is why we, we need to understand the mysteries of this kingdom, because it's meant for us to understand them. We don't only pray, our lives are not only, is only the concern we should have in our life, for, for our lives is not only about the material comfort that we feel that we need, you know, imminently. What is imminent is the fulfillment of the will of God. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ taught, taught us, that, that we should first seek the kingdom and its righteousness, then all other things will be added. The question is, who is the one adding the, the, all, all other things? It is the Lord God who is adding the all, all, all other things. So his will comes first. Okay? So here, the bowls of incense, meaning the bowls containing the prayers of the saints, that you and I and the millions of, our, of, of us have prayed the will of God in tongues or in our understanding, the Lord has kept those prayers in there in support of His will because we are co-workers with the Lord. He created us for his, as, as His workmanship to work with Him, to perform His will. He needs us in this business because He created us for His pleasure. When we perform His will, we give Him pleasure. So the bowls of prayers were given to the 24 elders and to the four living creatures. Once they had those bowls of prayers, then they sang this new song. And this is what they were saying in verse 9. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. What they are saying there, does not relate to them. The 24 elders are not from every tribe in every tongue. The four living creatures are not from every tribe in every tongue. They are not human beings. They are spiritual beings with bodies, fully bodied, yes, but they are not human beings. They have never been here on earth to, as, 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 as their habitation. The four living creatures have been because they've traveled down with the Lord before when Ezekiel saw them at the, the river Kiba. Yeah. But they don't live here on earth. They're not human beings. They have bodies, yes. They're spiritual, spiritual beings, but they're not human beings. So that song does not relate to them. The reason why they're able to sing that song is because of the prayers of the saints. Because the prayers that we have prayed speak of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. When we recognize the work that He has done for us, we pray in thanksgiving, we pray in recognition, those prayers are kept because they are speaking to the will of God. So in this case, they are saying what we are we have said before, because it doesn't relate to them. We are the ones that have been made kings and priests, redeemed. The twenty-four elders don't need to be redeemed; they have no sins to be redeemed of. Or the, or, the, or the 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 four living creatures. They are wholly perfect. They have never sinned, so they didn't need any redemption. They served the Lord faithfully, continue to do so. But they sang this song on our behalf because they get they got an insight into the content of the prayers in those bowls when the bowls were handed over to them. That's what they were able. To prophesy this, to utter these words, because we said them first. Yeah. 
That's that mystery there. Okay. Mm. But we're looking at the seals. What does the seal mean? Because the seals are bringing down judgment on this earth. So, in chapter 6 of the book of Revelation, uh, verse 1 to 17, okay, we start learning about each seal as the, the Lamb of God opens one after the other. In the first seal, John says, Now I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice, like thunder, Come and see. In uh, verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So that, the, the, that seal tells us what was going to happen on earth during the last days. Conquering and to conquer. Meaning, there's nothing we can do against that. Because it's been pronounced by the Lord God that this is going to happen. So every event is a precipitate to the coming of the Lord, to the judgment of the Lord, to the end or the very end when everything will actually come to an end. So the Lord has put all these events in motion to bring the end to, to, to come to pass. That's the idea behind it. There are processes that are intended to bring the end that we are waiting for. So conquering is part of that. There have been incidents of, you know, uh, the struggle in who wants to be the superpower and so on. That falls under that seal. And we're still experiencing that. And it's going to become more increased, it's going to become increasingly uh, uh, apparent as the, the days draw near to the end. And in, in verse 3 of chapter 6, when he opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red. So we had a white horse, and we have a, a fiery red horse, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And it was given to him a great sword. So under that seal, the Lord removes peace, some amount of peace in the world to cause chaos. Mm. We've had some of this happening and it will continue to happen. Because these apply to the last days at any point before each coming of the Lord. Okay. Mm. But more predominantly, could be increasing intensity before the forthcoming. Mm. And in the third seal, from chapter from verse five, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, "Come and see." So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. So the Lord is now going after the sustenance of life. This will bring famine because there will be difficulties here. When the price of goods will go up. But the Lord has said not to harm oil and wine. Spiritually, oil will represent anointing the Holy Spirit. 
and the one representing the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is that means that means that the sustenance of the saints of God will be preserved. Wheat and barley are classed as staple food, so the Lord is saying it's going to really, you know, hit the economy of the world where it hurts, and it is unavoidable. We may see signs of it. We see signs of it before the second coming. But it's going to be much more apparent before the forthcoming. And then from chapter, from verse seven of chapter six, we have the fourth seal. Yeah. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, "Come and see." So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. So the Lord is, is, is reducing the population of the earth, is killing individuals as way of judging them. And under this seal, death and Hades have been given the mandate to kill. Using the sword, using hunger, sword could mean weapons, any weapons, not just the sword, any weapon. Killing with hunger, or through famine, lack of food, lack of water. Mm. Killing the beasts of the field of the, of the earth, being mauled by animals, mm. by lions and, and, and so on. Mm. And uh, being killed with death. Now, it's quite interesting where, where, when we get the opportunity, we might go into more details with this. Uh, when the Lord says that he will kill somebody with death, and we're, all, we're going to get to touch on this anyway, because um, when we talk about the fifth coming, um, this will be mentioned again, you know, just to give you a, a little bit of preview. There is a specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 spiritual understanding we need to have when we we see the 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 the, the Lord use use killing by death. Yeah, it's quite specific because as we're going to we, we we are going to touch on this in in the future. Um, you realize that uh, death can absorb life and keep it, I mean, absorb souls after it has expired those souls' time here on earth and keep those souls in itself. For the Bible tells us that the Lord will, have the, will ask the, the sea to bring up the souls that it contains. So the sea, of, the sea is a compartment that can keep souls after death yeah. will ask the earth to bring up yeah. and death and hate is also yeah. so the souls that are trapped in death yeah. if death has been used to kill them they'll be trapped they'll be, they'll be trapped in death yeah. but believers only go one, one only go to one place under the earth, there is a compartment or a region that the Lord has, has prepared for his beloved. Where Lazarus, we're not like the Lazarus, Lazarus of Bethany, yeah? the Lazarus the Lord gave us a parable on, Lazarus the rich man. That is paradise. Not in Hades, in paradise, where his beloved are resting. They are well kept there. They live well there. No torment. Because they are the righteousness of God. Yeah. Remember when Lord Jesus was on, on the cross and uh, between the two, the two thieves and uh, one was saying that, oh, if you're the son of God, you should save us because you'll save yourself and save us. Bring us down from this, you know, this punishment, this, you know, um, execution we are, we're about to suffer. 
and the evidence has said that you shouldn't speak like that. We are we are here because of what we've done, because of the wrong that we have done. But he is an innocent man. And he said to the, he said to the Lord, Remember me in your kingdom. And the Lord said to him, Today you and I will be you'll be with me in paradise. So that paradise was where the Lord's God, God the Lord Jesus God was going down into into Hades, but he dropped the man in paradise first before going to, to, to Hades. Because the Lord wasn't ascending that night, it was going in, it was descending into the lower part of the earth. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll cover this when we we, we get there. We we we'll give out more details and then evidence for you to show what we are uh, referring to. Okay. So, so the fourth seal we see that the death and Hades are rampantly, you know, uh, taking lives because they've been ordered to do so okay, by sword, by hunger by beasts of the field and by death. So people dying, when somebody dies and you can't understand how they died, they were not sick, they were not there was not they, were, they didn't have an infection, anything of that sort, but they just died. That is dying by death taking a, a full control of that. Yeah. Not using anything else but just death expiring the person existence on this planet permanently. And the fifth seal, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under, that's uh, verse 9 of chapter 6, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Okay. So another mystery here on what the Lord has, why the Lord is uh, has this judgment in, in, in place because of the atrocities that his servants have suffered, especially those who have died as martyrs. And the Lord has a special a, a crown for them in the kingdom of God because mm -hmm. they laid down their lives for the cause of the gospel. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it was their work the Lord had given them, so he has a corresponding reward to, to match. Okay? And the special treatment for them. All of us get special treatment based on the work, the work that we have done. Okay? So there's no need to complain or be envious in any way because you do your work you get your reward yeah. amen. amen and now the sixth seal from chapter from verse 12 of chapter 6 i looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its light figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man did hid themselves in the caves and in, in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Follow us and hide us from the face of, the, of him who will sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and we is able to stand. Okay. Mm. This happens predominantly before the, at the, at the second coming, at the third coming, pardon me, because that's when the Lord would uh, give that view. On the forthcoming, this will happen as well because it will be descending, galloping on a horse into the earth. The skies will open equally to give that view. The impact will be the same. Because now it's actually coming into the earth and all the saints 
galloping on their white horses behind you. Yeah. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ who does all the fighting. We are there, we are there to support and praise him. And enjoy, you know, the judgment being falling on, on, on our enemies. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the seal that we are need to look at predominantly in connection to the forthcoming before the forthcoming uh, happens is the seventh seal. Yeah. And we look at that from chapter eight of the book of Revelation, from verse one. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. When the seventh seal was opened, 13 minutes of silence in heaven. Heaven is a very busy place, full of activities. But when that seal was opened, no one said a word. Because everybody knew, was now aware of what the content of that, that part of the scroll was about. And I saw, verse 2, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God. Now, Joe and John is giving us another uh, indication on another part of the organization in heaven. There are these seven angels that stand, you know, before God as well. The throne of God is massive. There's so many activities that happen there. There's so many individuals around there with their different functions. This is an incredible place. And I saw the seven angels will stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. The golden altar before the throne is the same golden altar the Lord had constructed to be to be uh, uh, to be placed in the holies of holies when the tabernacle was built and when the temple was built the same configuration the temple carried the same configuration in the sanctuary as the tabernacle was okay? that golden censer is the same one in heaven that the lord wanted a copy of to be made on earth so when he dwelt in the holies of holies among the cherubim in the ark of covenant it was his very presence. Yeah. But that covenant no longer exists because it's been replaced by the true, by the original. It was a copy. Yeah. So when the Lord Jesus Christ went up to heaven after he ascended, he brought his blood as the high priest used to do, as we have account of it in the, in the old covenant on earth. But he did it once and for all because his blood was perfect. No, like the blood of animals that had to be um, uh, had to be uh, uh, given or uh, provided every every now and then, as as the as the ordinances prescribed. Yeah. So that golden altar, which is close to the presence of the Lord, really, yeah, was where the prayers of saints and the incense were mixed together. To be placed on. Okay. That means the Lord is accepting that offering already and in connection to what he wanted to do. Because we said about the prayer of the saints, they are speaking of the will of God, encouraging the will of God, hastening the performance of that will. So Three. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. It was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. That means the Lord had accepted it. Then the angel took the, the censer, filled it with, with fire.
from the altar, the same golden altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So in the seventh seal, we've seen this procession, we've seen this uh, demonstration of this procedural demonstration that the Lord has very much backed with his power, resulting in noises, thunder, lighting, and earthquake before the seventh trumpet sound. This is all out of the seventh seal. Now the angels start to sound the trumpet. The first angel sounded the trumpet, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And the third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. The judgment has been, it's, um, um, you know, each single judgment has been unleashed now on the earth. The first trumpet sounds, vegetation is affected, trees and grass burnt up. So you have hail, fire, mingled with blood, thrown down to the earth. One may ask why the Lord is using blood. Because of the innocent blood that was shed, that's why the Lord is giving them back to the earth. Because at this time, there are no believers on earth, we need to understand. Yeah? No believers on earth. Before the forthcoming, all of us are in heaven. So, so we must strive, you know, to stay honest, to stay true in our, in our faith, in our commitment to the Lord, in serving Him. Because these occurrences, these, you know, happenings are not, nothing can prepare you for them, you know. They're not designed for us to, to, to experience. Won't be nice at all. This is the wrath of God, the anger of God at display here. Frightening, terrifying. Now the second trumpet, then, from verse 8, then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, burning with fire, was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Moving on, the third trumpet from verse 10. Then the angel sounded, then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. The third trumpet sounded to poison the waters, to kill human beings. It's the Lord judging. Moving on to the fourth trumpet. Then the fourth angel sounded. And a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, likewise the night. So the Lord reduced the capacity of the sun by a third, the capacity of the moon by the third. So it changed the, 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 the configuration as we know it from day to night. We're supposed to have a day daylight, like we have a daylight right this moment in, in the UK and much part of the of Europe and, and, and Africa as well, you know. 
half will be day, half night. Incredible. Some parts removed to the remote a particular part of the of the town or the city, it is dark. You move to a particular part, it is day. Because the sun is not shining fully when it's supposed to, because it's been struck. The moon equally. Thirteen, and I looked and I heard on an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So if you thought this was the worst that could happen, well, you have another thing coming because the three ones are left are on the highest level possible in comparison. So from verse 9, chapter 1, the fifth trumpet now. Okay? The fifth angel, then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. Now the bottomless pit is another compartment which the Lord uses for punishment. Okay? And there were creatures that had kept in there, fallen creatures, which left heaven together with Satan, some of them had to keep them in prison because it too ferocious. It didn't let them out. But now is letting them out. So let's read again from nine, verse one, chapter nine. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To that star was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless, the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened. I mean, the sun was only half uh, a third, uh, you know, dysfunctional. Now that 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 two thirds of it was left, you know, was darkened for that moment because of the smoke that arose out of the bottomless pit. And the air also became darkened or poisoned, right? difficult to, to breathe in. Then, verse 3, Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power, and to sting. They were commanded, uh, commanded not to harm the grass of the earth. There was not much of it left anyway. Or any green thing or any tree. But only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Okay. And I mentioned, mentioned before that well, there were no believers left on earth. But the last gospel was preached. The impact of that last gospel that results in some believing in the Lord God. And once they did so, the Lord had placed his seal on them, on them. Verse 5. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. These locust looking creatures, like good creatures, out of the bottomless pit would ravage human beings on earth for five months, stinging them, tormenting them, torturing them, but not killing them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. 
They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Death will be instructed to stay away. Because the idea is to torment, you know, inhabitants of the earth who do not believe in God, who have not believed in God, even after the last, the, the last, the last gospel, the everlasting gospel was preached by the angels. They are being tormented for five months straight. No killing them, just being tormented. Now this is the description of those creatures. In verse 7 of chapter 5, or chapter 9, the strange, the shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and they were, and there, and there were stings, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek is the name Apollyon. That's another fallen angel that the Lord kept in the bottom spit, causing the, 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 the angel of the bottom spit in charge of those creatures, guiding them, you know, strategically as their general. Chapter 12 One wall is passed. Behold, still two more walls are coming after these things. The sixth trumpet. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Another four angels that the Lord had to bind because they are ferocious. The Lord has bound them at the, at the river Euphrates. These are fallen angels that were once, you know, holy and servants of the Lord God, but they followed Lucifer, who became Satan, in his endeavor, in his, in, his, in his rebellion. So the Lord had to bind them. Some of them are really very, very angry and cruel. If the Lord let them out, they will cause so much damage. Because the Lord is not judging the world yet. Because... It is a time of grace, it's a dispensation of grace, and God's his people are still here. The Lord will not kill the wicked and the righteous. Definitely not. In the place where he has at least ten, he will not judge. And there are more than ten righteous at the moment on earth. But there's a plan that the Lord has put in place, and which is why we are which is what we are talking about. But these angels will be released. Yeah. Then as this angel sounded, verse 13, And I heard a voice from the four homes of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Please release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million and I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. So those four angels were commanders of the armies in the millions, 200 millions, that went around to kill a third of mankind. Because we are in the billions. And the Lord is strategically reducing the population of, of, of human beings. 
as part of his judgment. So after being tormented for five months, he gets to be killed mercilessly by a frightening preacher. Three wise by fire, smoke, and a brimstone, which came out of, of their, their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by this place did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, and of their theft. So the Lord is doing this, still trying to give people a chance, but they have no, no sense of, of, of perception to, to, to realize that chance has been given to them. So they still continued in their sins. So, this is what happens after the sixth trumpet. There's a seven trumpet that's going to be sounded as well, but this is the sixth trumpet. Okay? And there are other events that are happening as well that we, we, we need, to, we need to, to, to consider. But let's go to... We've already reached chapter 21 of... Um, verse 9 and uh, concluded that the inhabitants of the earth did not um, um, humble themselves to, to seek the Lord God they continued in, in their sins in their way of life their ways of life yeah, sexual morality, sorceries, worshipping of demons yeah, being materially consumed yeah. sometimes we look at not, 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 there are people still worshipping stones you know um, uh, figurines and, 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 and so on but there are those are also worshipping material things which are made of wood, made of metal and so on okay. uh, it's the same thing they might not call them God but they are consumed by those things because it's taking them away from the Lord God therefore they are, those things are idols anything that takes you away from focusing on the Lord God is an idol because it is contending with the Lord God therefore you've given it the status of a God the Lord, can't give, the Lord God can't give attention precisely because that particular thing or that particular person has consumed your attention fully. That's why we have to be very careful, brethren. Do not place a human being in the, in the, instead of God. If somebody has, you refer to the person as the man of God, then it should be clear that that person has importance because they are connected to God. Yeah. And it is that person's responsibility to ensure that you follow that God that they are connected to. And we're talking about the old Lord God Almighty, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not talking about any other gods. There's only one true and living God, the one that we serve, whom we have known as the Father whom the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has shown us to, has committed us to. So you must not focus on the person. There is no mediator between man and God except the man Christ Jesus. He has taken us to the Father himself. So we don't need any go-between. In his mediation, he has reconciled us. So we have full connection with God Almighty already. 
there is no gap between us and God. So you don't need anybody to go in there and plead your case for you. Because you stand before God as a priest to minister unto him. So you can declare whatever you need to declare to him. Get into a conversation with him. That's the position you have in Christ. So if you have somebody as your mentor or your to, to, to disciple you or to teach you or, or to, to act as a, as a shepherd, they are not taking the place of God. Do not worship them. Do not bow before them. You ought to reference someone. Yes, reference them. Because you are referencing the Lord God. But you don't give them a special reference for their role. That is worship. You do not do, do that. Do not disrespect anyone. Of course not. But it should not. your respect of a person should not culminate into worship. That is how the worship is precisely the reason why the Lord is judging this world. We need to be very, very careful. And if you're in a position where people are lavishing you with praise, with adulation and, and so on, you need to make it stop. You need to tell them, worship God. John said, I was about to bow and, and you know, before the angel that was sent to me to worship and said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant, like the prophet, the saints, and those that obey God. Worship God. Not man. No woman. No man of God, a woman of God, no prophet. No. Don't worship not any, any of those people. Worship God. That's not difficult. To understand, it's not. Amen. So I will complete the part I of um, of the termination of the dragon, and this, and the beast is wine because there is B, there is C as well. We won't be able to finish everything today. Okay, um, we want to keep it within um, a well measured, uh, uh, you know, time, time structure so that. The videos are are, are palatable. Uh, they, 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 they don't seem too long. Amen. Mm. Right. So, so there is the the prophecy from the little book as well within the the wrath of God. Okay, and the A part of the events uh, that we've uh, termed termination of the dragon and, and, and the beast's reign. Okay. So we looked at the seven seals. But predominantly, the seventh seal is the one that we are uh, referring to as happening uh, precisely before the fourth coming, because the Lord sends that when the, the seventh trumpet blows, you have these creatures coming out of the bottom of the pit, led by the angel of the bottom of the pit, Abaddon or Apollyon. Abaddon's in, in Hebrew, Apollyon's in Greek. You know, these fearsome creatures that are sent. To torment mankind for five months, not to kill them, just to torment for five months. Okay. The sixth trumpet that is, and the seventh trumpet, that's when the four creatures, the four um, angels, bound the Euphrates with the army of two hundred million yeah. horsemen or creatures that will be killing many people a third of mankind again but those who would have escaped that massacre would still give their life to, to, to the Lord would turn to, to Christ Jesus for salvation such is the heart of man and then we have the prophecy of the little book yeah? and then we have the uh, the witnesses, the two witnesses as well, and we also have the bowls of judgment. There's quite a lot happening before the forthcoming. Okay. So for the prophecy of the little book, little book, we have the book of Revelation again, uh, chapter 10 from verse 1 to, <clears throat> to 10. These are long passages because of the mysteries, because of the word of God that has been given unto us. There, there is volume when it comes to the mystery of his kingdom. Our God is not 
a simplistic God is complex. Okay. So that's so we have this complexity of information to deal with. But he has equipped us with his wisdom. We only need to ask and be patient, you know, as the Holy Spirit takes us step by step in, into the understanding that we need to have. Okay. Chapter 10 of the book of Revelation. For verse 1. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now, when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are, that are in it, and that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he's about to sound, the mystery of God will be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. Okay. Mm. John, now we go to, to, to verse 8. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open, and the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Okay. Mm. So, another key event, this is important, why the... the John had to consume that little book because the Lord was fusing his word into his spirit that he'll prophesy things that were to come. John had no no clue what else was going to be said, you know, because the Lord had called him up to, to give him a, a preview of all these occurrences before they happened in connection to uh, the end time. And there's a mention there of the seventh trumpet, which was saying that the seventh trumpet is that telling because it consummates quite a lot of things towards the end. Because when the Lord Jesus comes back to the saints, the forthcoming, we are reached, we have reached the end. After that is the judgment, which we're going to touch on when we have the opportunity as the Lord gives us grace in, in this uh, study and discussion. So what does John prophesy then? about the content of the little book. Okay? This is what happens afterwards. Okay? From, from uh, Revelation chapter 11 to uh, verse 1 to, to 14, we see what the content of the prophecies um, uh, of the prophecy um, was. And then we also have Revelation chapter 15 from verse 16, yeah, which hopefully we'll have a chance to, 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 to look at, to complete at least the A part, uh, so the next next time we, we can move on. Yeah. Right, so, Revelation 11, uh, Revelation chapter 11, from verse 1 to, to 14, the Bible tells us, Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, 
and do not measure it, for it has been for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty two months, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. Now we are an introduction to two other spiritual beings which are which are refer, what are referred to as which are referred to as the two olive trees they stand before the throne of god they have very good function yeah. and the, and the, the, these are the two uh, verse 4 these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the god of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies and if anyone anyone wants to harm them he must be killed in this manner these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire okay. verse 7 when they finish their testimony the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. That's the, 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 the false prophet or the, the earth beast that we looked at in, uh, briefly in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. So you have the sea beast. The dragon first gives his power and is thrown over to the sea beast. Comes the beast that comes out of the sea. And then after 42 months, the, 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 the sea beast hands over his power to the beast that comes out of the earth. That's the beast that comes at the bottom of the space. That's that particular beast. He's there as we speak. You have Apollyon there, you have that beast there as well. Okay. So here, the Bible tells us that the two witnesses will be prophesying. The Lord will have sent them to do, to do his word, to contend for the faith. Okay. Because the Lord, said, the, the Bible tells us, when the Lord Jesus Christ was giving us a model of prayer, or the organization of our, in, in, in prayer, so we must always ask the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the Lord will not leave earth empty without his will being, uh, being brought into the remembrance of those that are, that are in, in, on earth. Because precisely that's why he created the earth to act as a, uh, a representation of, of his will in heaven. Because where mankind is, the will of, the, of, of God must be performed. So there was no one performing his will, so he sent these two representatives, the two olive trees, the two lampstands, to come and contend for the faith. So when they finished the testimony in, in, in verse 7 of chapter, four, uh, chapter 11, the book of Revelation, the beast, or the false prophet, that ascends out of the bottom of the spit, will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. They will die. And their dead bodies will be will lie in the streets of the great city, which is Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and in, in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, because our Lord was crucified in Golgotha, the old Calvary, as it says it understood in Greek, outside was say outside the outskirts of Jerusalem, not within Jerusalem per se, outside the outskirts of the outskirts of Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is nearest, and we can relate to that as, as um, you know, uh, um, likely said Jerusalem. Then those from whom, then those from the peoples, tribes, as verse 9, uh, then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their, body, their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Verse 11. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies saw them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth of the city fell. 
In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to, to the God of heaven. The second wall is passed. Behold, the third wall is coming quickly. So the third wall is the seventh trumpet to be blown. Fifteen of verse eleven. Then the seven angels sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and it shall reign over uh, forever and ever. And the twenty four elders who sat before God on their throne fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Because you've taken your great power and reigned, the nations were angry and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and you should destroy those who destroy the earth. Amen. Amen. And then we have the balls of judgment which will be what we're going to be ending on uh, Revelation chapter 15 uh, from verse 1 actually go from uh, verse 16 uh, pardon me from chapter 16 so um, chapter 15 gives you a sort of prelude to the judgment of the well, of the of the bowls that uh, will be poured out okay well, from Judges chapter 16 verse 1 um, then we read about uh, the different judgment uh, after the bowls are being uh, poured out okay this is what we're going to be ending on today I trust the Lord that we can complete in the next 10 minutes by his grace. Yeah. Okay. Revelation chapter, chapter 16, verse 1, from verse 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. These are the, the same seven angels that stand before the throne of God as well. That had the seven trumpets. Now they're going to pour, to pour the bowls. Verse 2. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And the foul and loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. The first boy is pulled out so that there will be souls like out of boils okay, popping on or appearing on the skin of those individuals that had the mark of the beast. Meaning the beast worshippers they could have had the mark of his name or the image or his name on them forehead and right hand so the first boy is pulled out as judgment on them okay verse 3 then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it became blood as of a dead man and every living creature in the sea died. The sea was poisoned, turned into foul blood when the second bowl was pulled out. Second judgment. Verse 4 Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and it became blood. And I heard the angel of the woods saying, You are righteous, O Lord the one who is and who was and who is to be because you have judged these things for they have shed the blood of, of the saints and the prophets and prophets and you have given them blood to drink for it is their just due yeah. and i heard another from the altar saying even so lord god almighty true and righteous are your judgment so the lord is not doing anything more than he should have he's doing exactly Giving the, he's giving the right amount of judgment, the right sentence to match the, the, the spiritual crimes that people have committed. Verse 8. 
Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Now heat's been used. The sun reducing capacity but still working. And heat was used, heat was used here to scorch people, to burn them. With fire from the sun. Chapter uh, verse 10. Then the fifth angel pulled out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their souls, and did not repent of their deeds. So when the fifth bowl is pulled out, is pulled out onto the throne of the beast. Okay, and made the kingdom full of darkness brought them to their knees, brought them to an end. And the intensity of the pain from the previous judgment of the balls that have that created loathsome uh, souls, you know, blood, uh, uh, see the sea being turned into blood, the springs of water and being turned into blood, the heat from the sun, you know, to scorch, scorching people on, on, on earth, all that put together did not reduce the uh, uh, people to humility for them to, to seek God, but rather they turned bitter and, uh, and, and, and cursed God and did not repent. Hmm. Verse 12, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to govern them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So the six boys poured out to dry up Euphrates, the river Euphrates, and to create a pathway for all of God's enemies to come there. Okay? For the battle is going to happen on the forthcoming, which is Armageddon. And the Lord says in verse 15 of chapter 16, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garment, lest he walk naked and you see his shame. Your garment is your righteousness. That's what the mystery is being denoted by. Keeping your garment on, it is your righteousness. If you do not stay under the guide of the Holy Spirit, to maintain your status in Christ Jesus will be exposed because you'd have gone, you'd have wandered away from the will of God. So the Lord Jesus said to us that we need to keep our garments on. How do you keep your garments on? You put on the full armor of God to keep your garment on. You're reminded of your salvation. The helmet is on. Your breastplate of righteousness, okay? the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, your feet shone with the gospel of peace, your waist is girded with the truth. That's how you maintain your garment on. You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to fight the fight of faith. You need to contend for the faith. You need to, to do the work of God, to form the will of God. Occupy until he comes. Verse 16, or chapter 16. 
and they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. So you can see how the Lord is procedurally bringing everything to a close. At this stage now, the kingdom of the beast, the reign of the beast, has come to an end. And those kings that are coming from the east, we're going to look, we're going to look at, uh, at that at some point. We'll bring that in um, when there's opportunity to explain what that actually means. Okay. What is the concept, what, what constitutes the, the battle of Armageddon? What is it all about? We'll touch on that because this is before the, this is the event before the, the, the fifth coming. Okay. So we're going to touch on that in more detail. What is the battle of Armageddon? What does it involve? But here we're seeing the judgment preceding, or the events preceding the forthcoming. It's about the judgment that the Lord has prepared to execute on the inhabitants of the earth because of their treatment, or their atrocity and cruelty that they have uh, dealt to the prophets and to his saints. The injustice they have suffered, the unfairness they have suffered. And the Lord has given them their due judgment. Nothing more, nothing less. Exactly what is, you know, befitting what they have done. Because he is a righteous, is a, his, his, his judgments are right. Are, are, he's a righteous God. His judgments are righteous. And is well calculated, he has well calculated what is due to those people based on what they have done. Satan is judged as well. He will have his portion. His beastie friends will also have their, port their, their, their portions and we'll see how the Lord will deal with them. The scripture tells exactly how. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So we thank the Lord that we managed to get that done. So what we have learned today in conclusion um, is, is, is basically that we've looked at uh, the A part of the termination of the dragon and his beastie friends reign on earth. And how the Lord was going to bring that to pass. The Lord is dishing out judgment on the inhabitants of, of the earth because they have rejected him. And because of their idol worshipping, because of their sexual immorality, because of their theft, because of their uh, irreverence. And for the fact that they have killed his prophets and the saints. And he is also taking vengeance on the martyrs who have died for their testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've seen the importance of the seals, and especially the seventh seal, which brings to a close all that the Lord had planned to happen. And we see the judgment of the bowls that the Lord has uh, dished out to bring to that point where the preparation for the battle of Armageddon will happen. How the Lord will terminate the reign of the dragon and his two beasts, the beast from the sea and the beast from the from the earth, also known as the beast from the bottom, bottomless pit. Okay? And we'll see how the Lord would uh, torment and punish the earth strategically, at the same time giving a chance to those who may find that uh, grace to call on him to switch camps. We'll see that there will be devastation there will be lots of killings. And all these things will actually happen because they are true. And we should be careful not to, 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 to diminish you know, the actuality of these events. Not to try and uh, use a technological you know, the, the perspective to descri in describing them. To say that because of the technology that we're having at the moment, it's likely to happen in this way, you know, in this manner, in that manner. No. The Lord God knew technology would have, would have, would have, would have advanced in our days. He knew this was going to happen. So, if it was to do with technology or what we've seen in sci-fi movies, in the fiction, uh, fictitious, you know, uh, or graphical representation we've seen in movies, that is exactly what's going to be happening. No, it is quite clear 
what we are reading the scriptures. These scriptures that's going to be released as the bottom of the spirit when the fifth seal is, 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 is opened with the, with, uh, with, with the angel of the bottom of the spirit, uh, Albert and Napoleon, leading them. They are described as such. That's what they are. That's what they look like. We don't need to, to help the Lord God or to try and understand whether it, it is metaphorical. No. There's no metaphor there. Those creatures are what they are. That's what they look like. You know, so we really need to work our hardest, you know, in how we, we commit ourselves to, to, the, to, to the work of the Lord in doing what he has committed unto us to do. And the Lord Jesus Christ said we should watch. And ensure that we keep our garments on. We, we, we stay in our status as righteous. We fulfill the call upon our lives in serving Him. Okay? So we give Him praise, we give Him glory. We're just going to read this scripture as an admonition for, for to, to, to close the session. Okay. Revelation chapter 6 verse 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and the sea is shine. Amen. So be encouraged, brethren, and stay blessed and see you again soon. Have a blessed week.